Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, March 30th, and I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Grab your coffee mug and let's have some coffee time chat. So yesterday the weather was really not really nice, lots of wind and rain, so I stayed in most of the day. But Saturday was quite lovely and I did a little bit of work in my yard. I got all my Christmas lights down and uh, chopped up some ice that was uh, on, in my driveway. So I did a little bit of that. But what I've been doing, I don't know if I've mentioned before that I've taken up a new hobby this year, and that's painting by numbers for adults. And so I start, I ordered a new one on Amazon and it came in. And so I started working on that. So I'm gonna show you some of my paint by numbers that I've been doing. The very first one I did was quite challenging for a beginner. It was a winter scene with snowman and it was really difficult because there's lots of different shades of white to use. So here's the finished product. So that's my winter snowman painting. And I've put that one away now because winter is pretty much over, thank goodness. And I worked on a spring one that I could display. So this is my spring paint by number that I did. I was quite proud of myself for all the different shadings of the greens here. But it's really not that difficult because you're just filling in all the spaces with the colors that they tell you to use. And now I'm working on a, one that I'll be able to use in the fall. And when it's finished, this is the box it comes in. It's going to look like this. So lots of tre uh, trees turned in colors. And um, so I'll show you what I've done so far and you'll get a little idea of how small the areas are that you have to paint in. Sometimes I even have to use a magnifying glass to see what the number is. So this is my what I did on the weekend. And I'll just keep doing a little bit um, when I have time every day. I usually just do one color at a time and then my eyes kind of get tired because it's the numbers are quite small. So I started with number one and then I did number two and number three. So I'm now I'm up to number nine. And I did notice that there are a lot of number nine areas to paint in. So I'm going to wait till I have a good chunk of time um, to work on that, not just a few minutes. The red didn't take very long. As you can see, there's, there was only a few spots that needed red. So that one went quite quickly. But number nine is going to take quite a long time. So they all, next week at our coffee time chat, I will show you my progress on my paint by numbers. I'm really enjoying this activity. So I hope you all had a great weekend too. If you want to send me a little message on email, a little video or a little note telling me what you did on the weekend, that would be awesome. Michelle sent me a nice note by email on Friday, and so I was really happy to get a little message from her. So I, you guys can do that too if you want. So we're going to do a few activities now. On Friday, we looked at some new cards that I got that were helping us practice our plurals. Remember, a plural is when there's more than one item, one dog, two dogs, one chair, two chairs. Those ones are quite easy because you just have to put an S. Some other words are a little trickier because they completely change, and we did those ones on Friday. I'm going to challenge you today. We're going to do this, those same words, but instead of doing when there's only one and you have to tell me when there's lots, I'm going to tell you what the word is when there's lots, and you have to think of the word for when there's only one. So here we go. There are lots of women, but there's only one woman. You have lots of teeth. I lost one tooth. There are lots of men playing the guitar and the instruments. Now there is only one man. There are lots of geese flying in the sky. By the way, I have been seeing lots of them outside in my yard up in the sky flying in a V formation. Lots of geese coming home. And now there is only one goose. There's lots of lice in this hair. There's only one louse. 
There are lots of feet in the air. Now there's only one foot. There are lots of people. Now there's only one person. There are lots of mice eating the cheese. Now there's only one mouse. There are lots of dice to roll. Now there's only one die. There are lots of oxen pulling the, the wagon. Now there's only one ox. Oh dear, there's a squirrel going up the tree and the boys don't like it. There are many children. There's only one child. Now the, the new rule we're going to learn today is that some words, when there's lots of them, don't even change. They just stay the same. You don't add an S, you don't change the letters, you just say it exactly the same way. So let's look at some of those. One elk, lots of elk. One, there, there's lots of mud. There's a little bit of mud. One salmon, salmon, lots of salmon. One piece of luggage, lots of luggage. One reindeer, lots of reindeer. One piece of food, lots of food. One sheep, many sheep. One police officer, many poli two police officers. One, one container of soap, lots of soap. One homework job, Lots of homework jobs. Tomorrow I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to mix the words that change and the words that stay the same. I'm going to mix them all up to see if uh, you, you can know one from the other. Okay, I have one little story for you today. And it's called April's New Accessory. An accessory is something you add on to an, to an outfit. April sat down at the eye doctor's office and tried on her new glasses. They were ready just in time for school to start. They were black and had a square frame. Best of all, she could see. Who tried on new glasses? What was the best part? Where did she try on her glasses? When did she pick up her glasses? Remember, you can answer these questions always in full sentence format. You can answer them just by talking or you can challenge yourself to write the answers down too. I have an extra question or an extra activity. So April had, has a new accessory. I want you to go around and look at everyone in your house today and see who is wearing an accessory. I have earrings. That would be an accessory. It's an add-on. I have rings on. That is, those are accessories. If I was wearing a clip in my hair, that would be an accessory. My watch is an accessory. All right, now we're going to go to our what, where, when, why, how questions. I'm going to challenge you today. The first one's a warm up. It's a question and you can answer it. What do you do with a crayon? Where do you keep ice cream? Who checks your teeth 
for cavities. Why do you keep ice cream in the freezer? When do you build a snowman? This time, I'm going to give you the answer and you're going to have to think of a question to go with it. I'll do it for the first side and then the, this, the, on the flip side, you can try. So the answer is a chair. Here's a question, it has to be what. What will everyone sit on at the beach? So you try this one. Here's the picture, so we're in the grocery store. And the answer is food. So it has to be a what question with the answer being food. This one's a where, and the answer is on your ears. Where? Where do you put headphones? And the answer, on your, you put headphones on your ears. You try this one. So it looks like we have some giraffe at a zoo. The answer is to the zoo, and it has to be a where question. Where did the kids see the giraffe? Who? The answer is a fisherman. Who caught the fish? You try this one. It has to be a who question. And the answer is a mechanic. Okay, this one is a why question. Because you want to show good sportsmanship. Why do you shake your opponent's hand after a game? And you try this one. It's a why question. And the answer is because you want a wit to what you want a wish to come true. You want a wish to come true. A why question. A when question for this picture. The answer is when the tank is almost empty. When do you put gas in the car? You try this one. A when question. The answer is before you go out in the sun. So your job for today, and some of you might have already done it, is to retell the book that we were reading in March. It is the end of March, and we usually have our retelling activity at the end of March. So we were reading Sadie and the Snowman, and you can find that book easily on YouTube. There's lots of people on YouTube reading the book, so if you forget how the book goes, you can go on to um, onto YouTube and listen to it again. And um, almost everyone got their packages to bring home before March break and your retelling book was in there with the paper that had all some pictures to help you remember parts of the story. So remember you have to announce the story, the characters, the setting, the problem, and then tell everything that happened first, then next, finally. Challenge yourself to say at least three things for each area first, then next, Finally, try to remember as many details as you can instead of making it super short. And then, of course, your thinking sentence at the end is very important. That's when you get to say your feelings about it. It reminds me of, I liked when. I didn't like when. I was happy when. I wonder why. Those are all different ways to start a thinking sentence. If you've already done your Sadie and the Snowman retelling, you can pick any book you have at home, read it, and then go tell someone about the story that you read. They can write your retelling down, or you could just talk about it and they don't have to write it down. It'd be good to practice some retelling today.
um, for mom and dads. I'm going to be sending an email out today with a, a few more websites that for reading that um, that you might want to try. They're free websites and also with an activity um, that your family might want to participate in uh, to help out our friends over at the Pamanad residence, retirement residence. Um, they're on lockdown right now and so they can't have any visitors and they have to mostly just stay in their rooms. So it's, they're, it's quite lonely for them right now. My, our afternoon class have reading buddies over there and our morning class knows Stephen because he's volunteered in our class a few times. Um, so uh, check your email out for more information about that. I was thinking it would be nice um, to email over to the activity director, Emily, some pictures or a little note. Um, maybe to just take a picture of it on your on your phones, iPads, and email it directly to the activity director, and she'll look after photocopying it and dis distributing it out. Um, and just uh, just check your email for that, and I'll have more information about that. But it would be really nice to get involved in that, and even your other family members, or anyone you know. Um, their second building is now open, so they do have quite a few residents um, to look after who are quite lonely in their rooms. So. It might be just a little thing that could cheer them up to receive a, a little bit, uh, to get, receive a little picture or a message from our friends. Again, we'll be just sending those by email to the activity director and she will be distributing them. And so check your email for more information about that. So I hope you all have a great day. Enjoy your retelling and enjoy the rest of your coffee. And don't forget to send me messages and videos and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.